States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here. Mr. Nola. Here. Mr. O'Donnell. Here. Mr. Ritter. Here. Mr. Stephen Ward. Here. Please be. Mrs. Warning. Here. Mr. Williams. Here. Thank you. Uh, before we get into comments from residents, um, we will start with a short presentation from Aaron Meyer, uh, one of our high school business um, ed teachers who's going to show us uh, what the students have been working on with the website design. Uh, first of all, thank you. I know this time of the year is insane. <laughs> Uh, so I'll try to be as quick as I can. I'll just give you a quick background. This is something I've wanted to do ever since I started teaching. Um, and, I, and the opportunity came about, uh, we're actually hoping to do this before the end of the school year to present it to everyone and make it a really big deal, ribbon cutting ceremony and everything. Because the kids have worked so hard on taking something that I think has been neglected to a certain point with an organization that has a $70 million budget. I mean, it should be like our storefront. It should be really, really nice. Uh, so the kids, um, through some of my direction and, and my teaching, we decided on a couple things, sat down, and we started crunching out Gateway's new website. Um, it's a lot more organized. I think you'll be happy when you, like, if you wanted to search for something. Um, I don't know. Let's, let's go with the project. Well, that, that's something that I want to work with. Go ahead and navigate to whatever month and see what's going on for that month for any athletics. You can see everything that shows up there in yellow has something going on. Um, we even went as far as adding, um, let me get back down here, um, actual pages with the team photos on there. So we go down and, and just looked at the uh, football real quick you can see there's last year's photo there's a calendar and this will just show football stuff for each team's page so there's a bunch of things we worked on a lot of things we discussed some things we looked at the old site and i think i lost more hair than what i already have uh, but regardless it was um, a great experience for these students the system we use is actually used by the white house uh, so one it's secure which is very important in today's world. We don't need people jumping into our site, doing things. Um, but now they have a skill uh, that they can walk out into the real world and say, I work on the school's website. There's a web address. Check it out. I was responsible for this and this. And these are skills that these kids sometimes don't even get to learn in college. And here they are being in charge of, or not necessarily in charge, but being a part of, you know, this website. And like I started out, you know, there's a $71 million budget here, and these kids had the opportunity um, to redesign it and make it something very useful. So um, our hope going forward is to obviously continue with the class, but take this to the next level. It's kind of static the way it is right now. We want it more dynamic. We want people coming to Gateway's website for everything. Anything that's going on at Gateway, you should be able to find it. One, two, three clicks, and they're done. Um, one of the students sitting over there behind um, Mr. Williams, seven, he worked really hard on this. He was 
I almost want to say this was the perfect opportunity because the students I had, I had the hackers, the guys that wanted to like, how do we make this work and how do we break it? Can we break it and then fix it again? This was just should be fun. He was one of those guys. And then I had kind of like the worker bees that put in every single faculty and staff member, cut, copy, paste, cut, copy, paste, which was a long drawing process, but they were equipped and they were fine doing that. You know, and it worked like a real web design um, business, if you will. So thank you uh, for your time. Um, and as far as I know, talking with Michael, this will be live next month. So anything that goes through need changes, um, we're still trying to figure out some of the logistics as far as that goes uh, on how things will be handled. But we're going to move forward, and away we go. Thank you. Thank, thank you very you, much, entire students. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. You're welcome. I really appreciate thank it. You. into comments from residents on agenda items and agenda items only to begin. Um, before I begin, just a few announcements. According to board policy 903, we have more than five people speaking. Um, residents will be limited to two minutes, so we will um, adhere to a strict two-minute um, time allotment. Also, um, this is not a Q&A. This is um, any questions that you guys may have, you may ask, um, any concerns you may have, um, but this is not to become a debate. Um, so we will start with individuals who had signed up in advance, and we will start with uh, Mr. Oliver Drumheller. And that's two minutes for everyone? Two minutes for everyone. Okay. If you could just state your name and address, please. Yes, I'm Oliver Drumheller, uh, 200 Scott Drive, Monroeville. I want you to know that I am uh, very strongly opposed to this uh, uh, whole activity about replacing our security guards with armed retired police officers. I think it's misguided. The uh, purpose of Gateway School District, as with all public education, is to uh, educate the students. If there are problems within our schools, we need to be sure that the teachers and administration and the families are involved in correcting those problems. If we suspend students for bad behavior without addressing the problems, that you're just treating the symptoms. You need to get at the causes and, and dive into those. Uh, realize that by displacing these employees of ours, uh, they have families, they have uh, careers that they work with, and they've put a lot of time into the district already. Obviously, we need to have a safe environment uh, for, for educational purposes. This is paramount. Students have got to be ready uh, to uh, come to school and learn. They have to be fed. They have to have a safe environment at home, some place that they can study, someone that they can go to and talk with. Uh, Gateway, which composes, uh, uh, is composed of Monroeville and Pitcairn, two communities, uh, the demographics here have changed greatly in the last 12 years. We now have over 40% of our students receiving free and reduced lunches, which is a, a good measure of poverty. We all should be aware of that. We have great diversity in the district, which is a strength. Uh, we also have homeless students. Uh, I believe last year was like 43 students that were homeless. That, that makes it difficult also. Also, another problem is the fact that we start high school so darn early in the morning, we are causing sleep deprivation in our students. This is very dangerous, and uh, we need to be aware that sleepy students, just like sleepy adults, uh, make bad decisions, more risky behavior, they don't perform as well, and they're not as safe. I'm not um, done yet. We have two minutes, according to. I policy. called in. Oh, excuse me. I called in early. I had four minutes. Four minutes was on the agenda. Uh, on the agenda on the website. Mr. Grummeller, you you were a previous board member. Policy 903 uh, clearly states that if many individuals, being five or more, speak, they are limited to two minutes. So that's part of the agenda. That is board policy. Which okay, is board then policy. I I invoke the opportunity to spend two minutes talking about that. How would that be? Thank you, thank you very much for your time. Please you, vote no on Great. this misguided proposition. Greatly appreciated. Uh, next up we have Dave Palermo. Dave, if you could just state your name and address, please. Uh, Dave Palermo, 173 Shackleford Drive, Monroeville. Okay. Um, basically, uh, when I addressed you before, uh, my <coughs> position hasn't changed. I could summarize it within a couple minutes. If a shot was fired right now, what's the first thing you would do? Call 911. And what's the purpose of calling 911? 
to get the police here. Why? Because they have the guns. Simple as that. If, there, uh, if you already have people here, that, uh, armed, trained police officers who are used to uh, dealing with these type of situations, you enhance greatly the body count and the injuries later on. Yeah, you have to have them here immediately at that point. That's it. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Um, next up, we have Mr. Rick Atwood. If you could please state your name and address for the record as well. Rick Atwood, I live in Monroeville. Um, I, I agree with Dave to a certain extent. I think this is a dynamite idea. I think it's long overdue. I don't think it's very well thought out. I'm not sure of anybody's resume. I have kind of looked it over as best I could, but I don't see one security professional here. Was one consulted? Was the chief of police of Monroeville consulted? I spoke with the chief of police um, personally within the last week. I'm not on the security committee, so no, I did not attend those meetings. And as far as I know, um, was he consulted? I don't want to take your two minutes away. I can talk to you after and with, give you more details, but absolutely we consulted with um, state troopers, police chiefs, past, present, current municipal officers, current state police officers, um, and a sheriff. And other schools, uh, four other schools. And those people were an integral part in drafting this policy that absolutely. you have? Absolutely, Rick. Wow. Okay, because the several that I know, that two of which are world-renowned in security and counterterrorism, have just flaw after flaw after flaw with this. Well, it, it would. It Dr. Zetti also took me to a security seminar with world-renowned. Um, it's my suggestion, officer. Also, that you look into this a little bit further and move forward after some serious due diligence. That's Thank you. that's my point. I'm not saying that you didn't do homework, and I'm not saying that you didn't attempt to try and do the best effort, but take the $6,000 that you saved by hiring the superintendent and hire a security mm -hmm. firm that will appoint out all of your loopholes in the security, not just in this armed guard plan, but district-wide security issues throughout every building, and then implement a plan that is recommended by professionals. Thank you very much, Mr. Atwood. Um, next up, we have Rabbi Barb. <laughs> Rabbi, if you could please state your name and address for the record, please. Barbara Simons, Monroeville. So I, first of all, appreciate the great efforts that all of you go to on behalf of our school district. And obviously, we want that all of our students and our staff to be safe. I've learned sometimes the hard way that budgets, no matter how little or more we spend, that don't reflect our values, are money poorly spent. And so the challenge for me is that part of what the security policy needs to be looking at is the idea of relationships. And so when I think of a school resource officer and the work I personally have done with him, as with Officer Kandrak, as opposed to a security guard, there's a difference there in relationship, which, which makes me think about how much is focused on the students, the, let's say the interior, the internal body of Gateway and the relationships that happen there as opposed to a threat that comes from outside. I think that a lot of what a school resource officer does is going to be, as it were, immeasurable, right? And, and so that's not good for budget numbers, and I understand that. But in terms of building the relationships, in terms of preventing what might have happened, I think part of this needs to be an idea of really focused on internally the students and the staff and what's best for Gateway, and not only some exterior threat that could be coming in. So I uh, plead with you, as, as people have spoken so well before me, to really budget per the values that we have here in Monroeville and Pitcairn. Thank you. 
just to address one point before we move on to our next, um, I do want to let you, everyone know um, that SRO training has been budgeted um, in the safety committee's proposal uh, for every single additional um, hire, so they would all actually receive the SRO training course um, that is budgeted. Um, next up we have Dave, and Dave, I'm sorry, I'm not able to read your last name. Faisal. Faisal. Uh, I'll be very brief. Um, if you I could state you all an email on Friday. So if you could state your name and address. Uh, David Faisal, 129 Penler Drive. Uh, I sent the board an email on Friday and got a response from, uh, a thank you from Cynthia, or Stephanie, excuse me, Stephanie Byrne and Mary Beth Carucci, nice to meet you. Uh, I'm against this because I don't think guns in schools make you any safer than not having a gun. I'm an ex-infantry officer. I don't claim to be a security expert, but it doesn't make sense. When I read the article in the paper on Friday that you're going to have four armed guards in four elementary schools that previously had no, no security, I urge you to think about this very seriously. I read the paper today, and a 15-year-old kid shot himself in the head with a handgun, inadvertently. A guy pleaded guilty when he left his handgun next to his child in the school on a, on a couch. I mean, we've got a problem with guns. And the way to secure buildings is not, not the best way, I'm saying, is not to have somebody in there with a gun also. There were security guards in Orlando that were armed. Did it save 49 lives? I don't think it did. I don't think it did. I agree with him that you might want to have a trained professional there, with, but with a gun in a school, I, I, just, I just don't see it happening. I, I think you should seriously consider not doing it. And I suggest if you put nine guards in there, you don't leave them in one building, you rotate them through the schools because what you want to do is you're asking to have these policemen gain a rapport with the students so they know who the poor students are, they know who the bullies are, they know who the leaders are, and they can take these kids through the school year. Thank you, Dave. You know? Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Um, last sign up in advance, we have uh, Glenn Raymer. Glenn, if you could state your name and address for the record, please. <laughs> My name is Glenn Raymer, uh, 171 Monticello Drive. Uh, I'm an assistant principal with Butler Area School District. I've been there, this is my 10th year. Uh, very simply put, you know, I'm not a security expert either, but I can talk to you about what we've done in the time since then. Right after Sandy Hook, our superintendent opened up, uh, worked a deal with the, one of the local judges. He opened up the courtroom, and our guys were armed two days after Sandy Hook. It was not a knee-jerk reaction. It was already planned. We spent almost a year putting that in place, and we realized that the best way to defend uh, our kids was to make sure that guys who were well-trained, who had the ability, were armed and could face any threat. Internal threat, external threat. Bottom line, we want to make sure our kids are safe. The number one reason it was done was so we could allow our teachers to teach, we can allow our kids to learn, and they can have a safer environment. It's really that simple. Part of my responsibilities as assistant principal, we have a student assistance program. And let me tell you something, we had 123 referrals to that program. We try to get the kids help. We try to direct their parents, direct them to get them some kind of help. Out of 123 referrals, 62 of them were provided access to outside agencies. 21 of their parents gave permission. Seven followed through. Seven followed through. My concern is we can't force, because at age 14, a student can refuse mental health help, and there's nothing their parent can do about it. So what it has come down to, and in my personal belief, if that's the way it's going to be, then we need to start <clears throat> focusing on containing the issue or being able to respond to the issue. I believe in trying to get as much help as we can to those kids, but we also have to be able to respond if they pr present a threat to the kids of our district. Now I'm going to leave you with one final comment. My daughter went with me to take your sons and daughters to work day two months ago. She came home, told my wife all about it. She said to my wife, I'd love to go to school there. My wife said, why? Because I feel safe. Thank you Thank very much, Glenn. Appreciate it.
Would any other residents like to speak on any agenda items? Seeing none. We have one. Go ahead. If you could just um, sign in there and also state your name and address for the record, please. And we, um, which sub, which agenda item will you be speaking to? The police officers. Okay, we'll okay. have a two minute limit. Since okay, then I'm going to do this first. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> state my name, Terry Williams, 108 Edgemead <laughs> Drive, Monroeville, PA. Um, I understand the pros and cons of having armed police officers in the school. I don't support them being in elementary schools. I uh, believe that that is relationship driven, accountability, and it deals with disciplining with dignity, especially at that young of an age. Hundreds of school districts across the country employ discipline policies that push students out of the classrooms and into the criminal justice system at alarming rates. We're getting ready to add to that. Uh, a phenomenon, if you guys don't already know, this is called school to prison pipeline. This process favors incarceration instead of education and disproportionately pushes minority students and students with discipline out of the schools. We're getting ready to contribute to that. Um, we're getting ready to send our, our students to jail with suspension rates being the top reason for students dropping out of school. And oh, by the way, in this district, African-American students are leading that ratio. Um, I ask that we invest, if we're going to bring them, that we invest in measures such as de-escalating training, micro-social racism, diversity, cultural responsive teaching, citizenship, cultural and social development. I ask that the counselors and administrators create plans to reach the students' success before they guarantee their failure. Teachers need a lot more support and training for effective discipline, and our schools need to use best practices for behavior modification to keep these kids in school, which is where they deserve to be. I ask that we don't allow our students to be demoralized, dehumanized. This is going to focus predominantly on the African American students. Okay, appreciate Thank you. It. Would anyone else like to speak on agenda items? Seeing none, we'll move on to section A, minutes of previous mi minutes. Mrs. Isha. Well, again, we to directors approves the minutes of the following previously held meetings. So moved. Second. Motion second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Seeing none, motion passes. We'll move on to section B, bills and financial reports, Mr. Sharp. Section B, resolved that the Gateway Board of School Directors approve sections B1, list of bills, B2, monthly financial statements, and B3, budget transfers, as listed in section B at the Tuesday, June 21st, 2016 regular board meeting. So moved. Second. Motion second. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, motion passes. Section C, items previously tabled, we have none this evening. Section D, personnel agenda, Mrs. Crump. Report. Resolved that the Gateway Board of School Directors accepts and approves the personnel agenda items 1 through 8 as listed in Section D for the regular board meeting of Tuesday, June 21st, 2016. As you do... Second. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, roll call Bonnie, please. Mrs. Rucci. Aye. Mr. Lapsovich. Aye. Mr. Nola. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell? I to all accept the transfer of the uh, school security personnel to uh, full time maintenance to that type of note. Mr. Ritter? Aye. Mr. Steubenbort? Aye. Mrs. Warning? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mrs. Byrne? Aye. Motion passed. We'll move on to Section E, Administrative Resolutions. Mr. Short. Thank you, Mr. Steubenborg. Under Administrative Resolutions, resolved that the Gateway Board of School Directors approves and authorizes the following items, 1 through 21, as listed in Section E. Uh, items 1 through 21, I believe Mr. Short will handle the majority of these, if you want to just kindly review those, Paul. 
Thank you. Um, and item number two, uh, we had two person uh, employees added to the conferences and conventions as indicated by the two asterisks. In section four, we had two additional student teachers, again indicated with the two asterisks added to the agenda from our study session meeting. Uh, one item which I do want to review, uh, which is item number seven, uh, which was not addition, but I do want to, again, focus on our general fund budget. Again, that will be set this evening at $71,155,000, keeping the district's real estate tax millage rate the same at 19.3264 mills. And again, also not utilizing any of the district's fund balance and balancing our 1617 general fund budget. Jumping ahead. Item number 18. Paul, just for verification, can you uh, state the year, the last time we had a balanced budget with no tax increase? or that, that would be the 2006-2007 fiscal year. And just for the record, what's our current fund balance? It's approximately $8.3 million. Uh, I think when we have our estimated calculation, we're looking at about 12% fund balance of our, our projected 16-17 budget, which is considered to be a very healthy fund balance. Item number 18, uh, which was a new item from the study session, is a resolution authorizing Gateway School District Administration to release a request for proposal for a district facilities for an Act 39 2010 project, formerly Act 77. Again, this just is another step in the process uh, to enable the board to evaluate any potentials. Uh, this does not um, obligate the district to any type of project nor any type of financing associated with the project. Next item, number 19, as it is the revision to this 2016-2017 school calendar as depicted in Exhibit H. Item number 20, agreement for continued participation in the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services administered school-based access program for the 16-17 fiscal year as depicted in Exhibit I. And item number 21, Resolution of the Gateway School District directing the solicitor to petition the Court of Common Pleas of Allegheny County to authorize and approve the arming of duly trained and appointed school police officers pursuant to the Pennsylvania School Code. Thank you, Mr. Chuck. Thank you. Do we have a motion? Do you want, before we go to a motion, do you want to separate any of these out? Um, we can. I'm just thinking you might want to separate them. One and 21? Yeah. Yeah, okay. it's going to be one and 21. We also have time for comment. Before we'll come after a motion and a second. Do we have so a motion? Moved. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Any questions or comments? Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I would just like to say that I'm not opposed to having armed guards in our schools. However, I strongly believe that the armed presence should be current law enforcement officers. Further, that a professional who is trained and experienced in school safety should be making the recommendation to this board to move forward with armed guards in all buildings. Armed guards would add another layer of protection, but they are not the only answer to protecting our children, nor are they 100% insurance that they could stop whatever threat presented itself. I believe that the kind and amount of necessary to keep an armed officer current and most effective is best left to the police chief of a municipality or borough, not a school board or educational experts. Furthermore, the manner that this has been rushed through, since I do not recall the previous school board researching this in great detail, nor discussing it at great length in safety committee meetings, concerns me. I believe that a decision like this one should be thought out and more consultation sought from law enforcement professionals who specialize in school safety. And that is why I will vote no. Any other questions or comments? Sure. Neil. Um, I just want to say that um, and I am, I am for the, the increased security, and I want to point out a few things about it, actually. I want to point out that we are planning on doing, um, and I think that this, these were important things to make sure that they were in the budget for. We're, all of our, uh, let, let's call them new officers or whatever, will have SRO training. So we will have you know, multiple SRO in the buildings going forward. Like, so that's one thing. So, because I am a big proponent of relationships and all that, and that's part of their training and part of what they're gonna do. All of the, all of the officers 
in the proposal that we have uh, will be trained in SRO training. They will also be go through uh, psych uh, testing all of the new hires that we do. So that, that will be done as well. They also will have ALICE training, which is uh, um, uh, active shooter training and, and stuff like that. So, so we're planning on doing it. And not only that, the way it's set up, and there has been a lot of um, thought and put into this and things, but the way it is set up, all the officers will be like teamed up too, so that they have, so we have coverage for not only if they're here, if they need to be off or not off, if if there's sick time or, or whatever, if there's overtime for, you know, like football games, basketball games. So we're gonna have coverage for all of these things by the approach that we took to do this. All of that being said, it's all done within um, basically the same budget amount, relatively speaking, as, as what we had before. And so I just wanted to point out those things so that everybody feels a little bit more comfortable. And I do want to point out one more thing. And although, I, I, I mean, we're going down this path, and I think that this is the right path to go down. Basically, we're approving the money to be spent for these things. So we, we I still want to hear from people if they have concerns or what their concerns are or and maybe we can try to alleviate those for, for whatever reasons because I'm hearing kind of that I think that people think that it's rushed this has been going on for a while now like multiple months like seven months or more actually and it actually had been talked about in years in the past Maybe not to the level of detail that we're at right now, but it has been discussed at times in the past. So I, I just want people to feel a little bit more comfortable with the decision. So that's why th the bottom line is the money is the money, and we can tweak this or change this as need be to accommodate what we think is the, the best thing and what our community thinks is the best thing. This is not being done for any reasons of you know, we have problems, we have this, we have anything outside. We This is for safety of our children, safety of our staff, safety of our teachers, safety of all the administrators. It, it's a peace of mind for all of us. It's basically an insurance policy for all of us. And it has nothing to do with anything else that you may be hearing. I don't believe that it has anything to do with that. It has to do with financially, it's feasible for us to be able to protect all of our assets, our kids and our teachers and administrators effectively. And we are giving them the proper training so that we are actually more covered than we were in the past. Thank you. I would just like to make a comment though. The ALICE training, the active shooter training isn't in our budget. I think we're relying on an SRO from Pitt Karen to provide the training for free. Um, second of all, they're not SROs that are going to be in here. They're, they're school police officers who are going for one SRO training. And the psych testing isn't every year, it's just when they're first hired. But, but the SRO training, the, the SROs that we have, and that's all that it is for them. But the SRO current. training is 40 hours. Okay. Right, but they're We're bringing in 30 year, 25 year law enforcement veterans i don't know how you can get better qualified than and, that and they will be receiving the same exact sro training as our sro um, that marenzi has and that uh, officer Kandrak have so it's it's a national accredited course um, they will all go through it so as far as everyone throws around sro yes they will be sros they will have the accredited certification um, just like officer Kandrak went through and was said he is to be an sro officer marenzi is an sro um, all of these officers will also be an sro um, I just want to say thank you very much to the safety committee, um, to Mary Beth, to Steve, to George. Um, they've done an amazing job on this. They've put countless hours into this, um, and you know the the detail that they've gone into this. Um, the professionals that you know I've, I've heard several people comment uh, were people consulted. A, a plethora of um, people were consulted, and people that I was very surprised um, that that they had reached out to, and you know the combined number of years that those individuals had in law enforcement was um, surprising. So thank you very much to the three of you. Um, I think you guys have done a phenomenal job. Um, I think this really does address um, the
the issue of, of safety. I think Glenn said it best when he said, you know, it makes the teachers feel safe, it makes the staff feel safe, it makes the students feel safe. Um, and when they're not worrying about safety, they can worry about learning. So to safety committee, thank you. Um, any other questions or comments on section E? I have a comment that I'd like to make. Steve. Um, and first of all, I appreciate the dialogue that has gone on with respect to this initiative. I appreciate the members of the community coming out, raising issues and concerns as they have done here and they have done on several other occasions. We had an intergovernmental committee meeting that was rather spirited and we exchanged a lot of uh, uh, points of view with uh, our counterparts in Monroeville and Pitcairn councils. Um, a number of us attended a Monroeville council meeting where the president addressed council and uh, raised and discussed a number of these issues and all of this is important. It's important that the community dialogue over an issue like this. This is in a, a big step for a community to take and not one that has been taken lightly nor should it be taken lightly. So when I consider taking this vote, there's one paramount issue that arises in my mind over and over again. And that is, I don't know how many wake up calls we have to have as individuals who are elected or as parents or as a community that there are in fact threats out there. That there are people who are willing to do horrific things, not just to adults, but to children. Our responsibility as elected officials is to ensure the safety of our children. That's paramount in my mind. Now, does this cover every base? No. Would any initiative cover every base? No. But I, as one school member, am not going to look back over my shoulder, having had a chance to vote in support of this initiative, the morning we wake up and find that a shooter did arrive at one of our schools. So I'm going to support this uh, and we'll vote in the affirmative. Our children's safety is absolutely paramount. Thanks. Thank you, Steve. Any other questions or comments on Section E, Administrative Resolution? I just, I just have a comment. Well, My platform I ran on was what's best for the kids. It was always kids first. And when this was first brought up, I was kind of concerned, you know, bringing officers, armed officers into the schools. But when I stopped to think I have a son that is a police officer, I feel very fortunate that he is in a position to be able to talk to kids that are having issues when we're talking about mental issues, whatever. They're able to pick that up. And I feel having these officers, I'm not saying becoming friendly with the students, but these armed officers that will be in the schools will be able to see what is going on with some of these students. And hopefully if it helps one child, it's well worth what we're putting out. So I will be supporting this. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments on Section E? Okay, if not, we will do um, a roll call, Bonnie, on 2 through 20. And then we will do 1 and 21 separate. So the first uh, vote will be for items 2 through 20. Roll call, Bonnie, please. Yes. Aye. Mr. Ritter? Aye. Mr. Stevenborg? Aye. Mrs. Loring? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mrs. Byrne? Aye. Mrs. Ritchie? Aye. Thank you. Two through 20 passed. We will now do a roll call vote for items 1 and 21 together. Did you set 1 and 21? 1 and 21. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I would recommend you separate those out. Hold on one we can do both. Um, if you want to abstain from one or vote no to one, you can just notify that. Okay. Um, one and on we motion second at all, and we're just voting on them separately. Um, so it'll be one and twenty-one. Roll call, Bonnie, please. Mr. Nola. Uh, aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mr. Steubenbord. Aye. Mrs. Warning. Aye. Mr. Williams. No. 
Mrs. Byrne? No. Mrs. Cerucci? Yes. Mr. Lapsevich? Aye. Okay. Motion passes seven to two. Thank you. We'll move on to section F resolutions presented by board members. Do we have any this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on to comments from residents on non-agenda items. Um, and again, we will use a two minute time frame. Do we have any residents who would like to speak on any non-agenda items? Seeing none, we'll move on to administrative and board reports. Um, Mrs. Crump. Thank you, Mr. Stevenport. We wish everyone has a wonderful summer this year. And to remind you, as you are resting at home, we are looking still for substitutes, teachers, custodians, and secretaries. So we will be here all summer. You can submit your applications at any time. Thank you, Mrs. Crump. Mr. Short. Nothing further. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Short. Likewise, uh, what Mrs. Crump had mentioned earlier, also I'd like to thank Mr. Miner and his class for the work that they've done on that website. Thank you. And uh, that's all I have tonight. Thank you very much. We'll move on to board reports. Mr. Williams. Uh, I, too, would like to thank Mr. Miner and his students on the work on the website. Thank you very much. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you very much. Mr. Ritter. Sure. We've got a Fourth of July parade coming up pretty soon. And what we wanted to try to do is involve the, uh, the students here at Gateway with the national mottos in God We Trust program. We weren't able to do that, but I invite the members of the community to help celebrate our independence in recognition that this is a nation in whom we trust in God. And we've got uh, a state budget. General Assembly's considering that. March, uh, I'm sorry, June 30th is the deadline for that. They were a little late last time. We hope they perform a little better this time. And there are a bunch of things going on with respect to education in the General Assembly right now. I won't go into detail. A couple of them are the uh, ESSA and um, uh, a study regarding school start times and many other things. So keep tuned to PC PCN TV, Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania Cable TV Network. That's a wonderful source for getting some information about what's going on legislatively. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Sergeant. First, I'd like to recognize Mr. Connolly. I wasn't able to attend, um, but it was uh, last week. He, of his own will, met about 30 students and some parents and chaperones and took them on a tour of Gettysburg. So um, I do know some students who attended, and it was exceptional, and I wish I could have been there. But I just want to say kudos. It's teachers like that who go the extra mile that really make Gateway proud. And Mr. Conley has definitely gone above and beyond. Uh, and I just want to publicly recognize him and thank him for that. And I hope uh, maybe next year I can participate because uh, I was bummed out that I was not able to attend. So thank you, Mr. Conley. And I also uh, noticed that Mr. Chuck Riley uh, is retiring. And I wanted to uh, recognize him and thank him for his service. Uh, my son had him as a math teacher this year. Uh, thank you for all of your service, Mr. Riley. And I also uh, thank Mr. Miner and the students who worked on this website. The preview was great. I'm very excited to uh, delve into it when it's public in about another month and, and look at all the hard work they've done. Um, but initially, it looks great. So thank you very much for that as well. Thank you, Mary Beth. Mrs. Waring. Uh, yes. Uh, as Mr. Ritter said, if everyone could come out and participate in the Fourth of July parade, um, hopefully, well, I'm not going to say hopefully it's going to be another good one this year. Um, hopefully we have nice weather. Summer is still going on. Watch for the children that are out there. And kids, remember, pick up a book every once in a while. Stay on track of reading. And nine days left till we bring in a new superintendent. And rest up. <laughs> but I feel proud to say that I know his door will always be open mm -hmm. phone call away or an email away so good thank luck you. Mr. Short mm -hmm. for that that's it thank you Bill. Mr. Lepsovich I just got a few words um, I have to thank the board for the great work we they did for budgeting the budget and getting policemen in all the buildings because if we could save one person, I feel we did our job. And also, the staff bought me a birthday cake, even though it was a week old. 
But and the cake wasn't wrinkled. They didn't have any candles on it because they, I guess they didn't want to buy four boxes of them. So um, that's all for me. Thank you, Mrs. Burn. Well, first I would like to make the announcement that Teachers Treasures will be closed in July and will reopen again in August. Um, next, I would like to say I'm disappointed in Senator Cruz, not that he's tuning in now, but he still hasn't paid his over $5,000 bill yet for renting our facilities in April. Um, next, thank you to Mr. Myers for uh, the website update. It's much needed and much appreciated. And that is all I have this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. And just uh, one point of clarification. Um, Senator Cruz did come to Gateway, as, as most of you are aware. Um, we had reached out to his office. They provided us the correct email address to send it to and said the um, check will be in shortly. So thank you for bringing that up. Um, Mr. O'Donnell. <laughs> Is that the same as the checkers in the mail? <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, I, I have only one comment I want to make, and that is, uh, with a regular basis, I pick up the uh, the paper and I read about the communities around us and uh, the passage of their school budgets, which have frequently included very significant increases in taxes and a uh, very significant drain on their fund balances in some instances taking the fund balance down to several hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, for what it's worth when you're running a 50 60 70 million dollar operation and you only have a couple of hundred thousand bucks in the bank to back you up you're you're in trouble so to the residents of gateway um if the news reports this you're going to wake up tomorrow morning and you're going to read about the uh, school districts uh, decision not to raise your taxes and not to use any fund balance and not to cut any programs. Good job. That's it. Yeah, I just had one more. I shouldn't have. I know how I forgot this, but I want to congratulate Joe Tomanella as being our new maintenance um, worker. He's been with the district for many years and he's proved them himself up to this day and that's why the board approved them. Welcome aboard. Mm -hmm. Thank you, George. Mr. Nolan. Yeah, I just have a few things, but I'll, I'll try to be quick. Uh, first thing is the artwork. It's gorgeous artwork over there. Yeah, Everybody that leaves should go over there and look at it. Our students do that like every month. It's very good stuff. Next thing is the budget. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that was involved in it, mostly Mr. Shot and, and all the administration and everybody. Um, uh, fab, difficult task. We tackled it a lot sooner this year. I think that that was part of making it easier for us. And so I just wanted to say thanks. I think that, you know, it's very difficult to do these things, especially as Mr. O'Donnell pointed out, and making it on budget without using your, your uh, funds and all those things and raising tax. That was, that's an awesome job by everybody. Next thing I wanted to say was uh, the honor roll. The, the, the fourth quarter honor roll came out. We, we have so many students that, that do so well. It, it, is, it is unbelievable. And, and I think that we should commend all those students. You know, we, we have an honor roll through uh, seventh through 12th grade honor rolls. And, and, and if you're on the honor roll, great. Keep it up, do better. Move to the next step of it if you can. We have several layers of it. And if you're not on it, strive to get to it. It's, 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 it's what we're built for. It's, what, it's what's going to help you in your entire life. So. I just want to say congratulations to everybody that made it and everybody that didn't make it just try a little bit harder please um, the next thing is I want to congratulate when you look at these these agendas that come out I don't know if anybody pays attention to them because they go over them so fast a lot of times there's like always we always get these grants and all these things that's a testament to all of the time and energy that people put in um, administrators teachers it, all the professionals around like that that, that, is, that is that is what keeps us great as gateway and I and I really appreciate that I mean we have to approve all these so we see them and we only we only see like you know the two sentences about what it is and how much and what they're doing but the time and energy that they put into it is phenomenal and they should all be commended for that and I really appreciate that uh, the next thing is the time that the board puts in the board as you saw with the security thing and all these the board is on committees to do these things and they meet way more than people see us 
meeting here, and I, you know, different committees on the board. And I believe strongly that everybody here has Gateway as their foundation of what they believe in. And I think that that's very important. And, and, and you know, people may say politics this and politics that. I, I know everybody on the board very well, and I think that they always have the students, the staff, the communities in, in their mind more so than what politics are going on. That's the last, and the last thing is, just have a great summer, everybody. <laughs> thank you. Very good, thank you. Um, I'll keep it brief, I have a few things though. Um, first, congratulations to Mr. Short on uh, finalizing the, the contract and everything there, so we look forward to you taking over the reins July 1st. Um, congratulations to Bob Brown, um, thought he was still here, but congratulations um, on the contract extension. Um, I want to thank Pick Aaron, um, especially um, Chief Ferelli, their police chief, um, for um, everything that he does uh, for providing the Alice training. Um, that's a savings to the district, so thank you very much for that um, and for always working well with the district. Um, I want to thank the mayor and council. Um, I spoke in front of them. I'm not sure if anyone got to see that or not, but um, I do want to say thank you to the mayor and to council for considering um, our offer to lower Officer Kandrak's um, salary. We understand it did not fit into their budget, um, but we do thank them for their consideration. I'd like to thank all board members, um, especially the safety committee, who had put in the time and effort to go over um, this proposal. Um, again, they, I've said it before, but they've spent a ton of time going through this, um, consulted a ton of professionals, um, and I, I believe really have a solid policy in place um, that really speaks to what's most important, which is the safety of the students, the staff, and the teachers here at the Gateway School District. So thank you very much for that. Um, and I look forward um, to having safer schools uh, as we work here in the future. Um, for the budget, I want to say thank you to Mr. Schott. Thank you to all um, budget managers. I know it was a tiresome process. We did start early, um, so I apologize for that. Um, we also go line item through line item in the LGI, so I also apologize for that. Um, but the hard work pays off. Uh, we switched to a zero-based budget this year. Uh, we were able to um, up our security um, substantially. We were able to um, put in a curriculum director, which was previously removed. Um, we were able to hire a new superintendent. So we, we were able to do a lot of good things. Um, no academic programs were cut, all with a balanced budget, no tax increase, and no utilization of um, the general fund. So thank you to everyone for your hard work. Um, you know, every every week we open the paper, we see another school that's in financial hardships. Um, with your Penn Hills, we saw Plum recently. They might have to take out a five million dollar loan. So, um, Paul, you can be uh, stressful at times with, with going down to the very penny, but we appreciate that. Honestly, we do um, because it keeps us out of the news for those reasons. Um, so it, it might seem that it goes unnoticed, but thank you very much to everyone who's involved in the budget process. Um, thank you to all teachers and staff for a great year. Um, I already said it, but congratulations to the class of 2016. Best of luck on your future endeavors, and um, I believe it's the second day of summer now, so have a mm -hmm. safe summer. Um, kids are out on the streets, so drive safely. Yeah. And uh, Neil, you have yeah, I just have one more thing. I, uh, I just happened to be up at the school, Mary Beth was with me, and, and we actually, at the high school, but this is going on in every school in our district. The, the, the custodians, I, I, I was mentioning all different people, but the custodians, they were, uh, they, they had to show us the, the floors. So they took pictures of the full before and after. Mm -hmm. It's phenomenal, like what what goes on in the summertime. You know, yeah, all the kids are gone, but when you come in and you look at the, I have them on my phone. If anybody wants to see them, <laughs> I mean, the color differential between the before and after, it, it, it's not even does. It looks like they put a new towel down. Mm -hmm. It is so good. So I, I just want to commend them, and, and I want to thank her for sending us through the schools to look at that. It was very nice. And thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Very good. I also um, forgot to mention thank you to everyone who showed up. Um, I know we've been going over the safety proposal for a few months. For everyone who did show up and voice their opinion, whether for it or against it, um, we appreciate it. We, we do. Um, please feel free to shoot us emails, give us a call, um, come meet with us. I, I know most of you um, who have spoke are, are pretty dependable on reaching out to us, so feel free to continue to reach out. Um, with that, I will seek a motion for adjournment. Thank you, motion. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. We have one. Motion passes. Thank you, guys. Have a good evening. <laughs>